Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> hello friends. I have just spent six hours watching RFK Jr. confirmation hearings. So today is uh, January. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice. I've got a cold going on here. Today is January 30th, 2025. This afternoon was RFK Jr.'s second hearing. Yesterday was his first hearing. I was over three hours long. Yesterday I watched the whole thing. I've got a bunch of notes right here. Uh, three hours again today. News reports have claimed that I'm anti-vaccine or any industry. I am neither. I am pro-safety. If you like a cheeseburger, a McDonald's cheeseburger, you should know what the impacts are on your family and on your health. Do with are you leadership. supportive of these onesies? <laughs> Militantly anti-vaccine. I, I am supportive of vaccines. Right. I will. Uh, I, I want good science. We shouldn't be giving 60% of the kids in school processed food that is making them sick. We shouldn't be spending 10% of the SNAP program on sugar drinks. If we want Americans to, to restore trust in the public health agencies, we need transparency. No one should be fooled here. Uh, I As Secretary that, of HHS, Kennedy can kill off access to vaccines and make millions of dollars while he does it. Will you reassure mothers unequivocally that the measles and hepatitis B vaccines do not cause autism. Senator, I am not going into the agency with any... Well, that's kind of a yes or no question, because the data is there. If you show me data, I will be the first person to assure the American people to take, that they need to take those vaccines. Now, what concerns that, me is that you've, you've cast doubt on some of these vaccines recently, I mean, like the last few years, but the data, and I could quote some of it, the data has been there for a long time. If the data is brought to you, and these studies that have been out there for quite some time and have been peer reviewed, and it shows that these two vaccines are not associated with autism, will you ask, no, I need even more? Or will you say, no, this, 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 I see this, it's, it's the test of time, and I unequivocally. Not only will I do that, but I will apologize for any statements that misled people otherwise. My friends who I've been talking about this with for a long time, RFK's stuff for, for a while, <laughs> they might be a little bit disappointed in, in, in my conclusion. My conclusion is kind of the same as it's always been. I am deeply concerned about many of the things he's been saying about vaccines, and I am super optimistic about the stuff he's been saying about chronic disease. We have a huge chronic disease problem, but we also have a huge anti-vax problem. Uh, I think he could really do a lot of good for America on the chronic disease side. He has the potential to be catastrophic when it comes to infectious disease, especially measles. That's the one I'm most concerned about. But he also has the potential to end the anti-vaccine movement for good. If RFK Jr. could come to us and say, look, I doubt because of this and this and this that vaccines are safe. These are the exact experiments that I need done. And if these experiments are done, and if these outcomes happen, I will accept that vaccines are safe, effective, and essential. I will apologize for what I've done in the past, and I will convince my audience that these things are also safe and effective and essential. Or maybe convince is the wrong word, but I will, I will show them the evidence that has been shown to me and we will move forward. There are a lot of people in America who are convinced that vaccines cause autism or might cause autism. Whether they're justified in thinking that or not, it almost doesn't matter. The belief is there, and because that belief is there, people are refusing vaccines, and because people are refusing vaccines, we have the potential of pandemics, vaccine-preventable pandemics from happening. Now, during during the trial, especially today, and I am so grateful, who, who was it? It was... Uh, Senator Cassidy, who really, he was trying to get RFK Jr. to say, what do you need to know to accept that these vaccines are safe? And they had a very good back and forth, the two of them. What I think we need to do right now, so those of us who work in the scientific community, those of us who work in scientific communication like me, but especially people who are working in the CDC, what they need to do is they need to go to him and say, you tell us what to do. You tell us how much oversight you need. You tell us exactly what you expect for transparency. And we will do it. We need to do the science according to what 
he thinks is legitimate, and we need to expect him and trust that he will follow the evidence wherever it leads. I think, I hope that he will be reasonable here. There's, there's evidence to suggest that he won't. I'm pretty sure that he's going to get his position. He will be the Secretary of Health and Human Services. He will be the guy in charge of the CDC, in charge of the NIH, and, and so on. He's going to have a lot of power. He's going to have a huge microphone. One of the big concerns that we heard during the trial was Senator Murray. She was very soft-spoken, but the, the words she said were so, so powerful. Keep in mind, she's in the let's not vote for him mode. Her strategy will have to change if he gets voted in. But listen very carefully to this. I just want to remind all my colleagues that by voting to confirm Mr. Kennedy, we would be telling our constituents he's worth listening to. That alone could get people killed before he even lifts a finger, because he does not even need the levers of power to influence people, as we saw in Samoa. All he needs is a megaphone. To affirm his views by voting to confirm him as our highest health official, we should not mince words about what that would mean. When babies die from whoopee cough because parents weren't sure if the vaccine was safe, we will have to look them in the eye. When measles sweeps through school, then hospitals, nursing wards, will this be worth it? There are political realities. We all get that. But there's also right and wrong, fact and fiction. And there's also people staying healthy or dying pointlessly from diseases we can prevent because they thought Congress took its job vetting our health care secretary seriously. That really was brilliantly said. I think she's spot on. However, if he does get confirmed, the reality is we have to find the silver lining. We have to find a way to move forward. Americans have lost trust in science. They have lost trust in our health institutions. They lost trust during COVID. Some people lost trust before COVID. We have to gain it back. It's going to be hard. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be difficult. It's going to take... <laughs> Maybe even doing experiments that are ridiculous, experiments that have already been done before, experiments that are just over the top. But there is this saying that we have in science communication that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. What does that mean? Who is it that decides what an extraordinary claim is? It's the listener. The listener decides what, sort of, what sorts of claims are extraordinary. There's a bunch of Americans our family members, our neighbors, our relatives, who believe they are convinced that vaccines are evil <laughs> or that they cause diseases. For that group of people, if you tell them, no, vaccines are safe, effective, and essential, some of them are essential, that is an extraordinary claim for them. Because that claim is extraordinary, they require extraordinary evidence. And I'm not saying that that's how things should be, I'm just saying that's how things are, and we have to meet people where they are. Look, if you look behind me, I've got a picture of Darwin on my wall. I teach genetics and evolution. I've been doing this online mostly for, oh, it's been, I think, 13 years now. And what I have learned is that if I have students or viewers who reject evolution for, for religious purposes, they require a lot of extra evidence before they will accept that evolution is a thing. And there are two ways that I can deal with that as a teacher. I can just tell them that they're stupid and that they're wrong and that they're dumb and that they're idiots, or I can just meet them where they are. And I can do my best and show them, this is the evidence that we have. These are the standards of evidence that we use in our field. Here's what I can show you. You can see this with your own eyes. For a lot of people, if you take the time and really go through and are careful and you show them, they will respond to evidence. People do follow evidence. They really do. One thing that I've heard people say about RFK Jr. is that he is a cowboy. And it's disgusting that we have a cowboy who's going to gain this much power. I agree that he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy coming in here. But I think that that's not as bad as people think it is. If we help him aim his guns in the right direction, and he seems like he wants help aiming his guns, I think this could go really well for us. I think that we could really bust through a lot of these conflicts of interest that have been stopping us from really saying what, what types of foods are healthy and what types are not healthy. Obesity is a huge problem. It kills people.
metabolic disease, type 2 diabetes, the, the kind that you give yourself by eating crap food your entire life, that is a preventable disease. Michelle Obama tried to talk about it, but Republicans basically just laughed her off the stage. Francis Collins tried to talk about it. He did a lot of public outreach on this issue. Again, it just didn't stick. I don't know if RFK Jr. is actually going to get the position that uh, he was promised. He might. They, they might vote against him. I don't know. If he does get it, I wish him the best. And I my hope is that everyone in the scientific community will immediately just see, like, look, this is the new <laughs> reality. RFK Jr. is our leader now. Let's work with him. Let's give him the evidence that he needs to do the right thing. I hope <laughs> that he will be reasonable. Maybe I'm just a sucker. I don't know. That's my immediate reaction from this six hours of insanity that I just, <laughs> I've just watched. Um, I need to go to bed. I'm going to edit this in the morning. Sorry if I rambled here, but these are my thoughts.